Seventh grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit five, lesson two, changing temperatures. Problem number one, A. The temperature is negative two degrees Celsius. If the temperature rises by 15 degrees Celsius, what is the new temperature? Since rises means increasing, we can look at this as negative two plus positive 15. That, of course, is the same as negative 2 plus 15. And you can rearrange the order and rewrite this as 15 minus 2, or 13. The new temperature would be 13 degrees Celsius. B. At midnight, the temperature is negative 6 degrees Celsius. At midday, the temperature is 9 degrees Celsius. By how much did the temperature rise? The information tells us that at midnight, the temperature was negative six degrees, and then at midday, the temperature was positive nine degrees. The number of units between negative six and positive nine is 15. So we know that the temperature increased 15 degrees. We can also look at it as nine minus a negative six. Negative also means the opposite of, so I'd like to look at this as nine and the opposite of negative six. Since the opposite of a negative is a positive, we can look at this as nine plus six. And nine plus six is 15. So the temperature changed 15 degrees Celsius. Problem number two from seventh grade unit five, lesson one. Complete each statement with a number that makes the statement true. A. We can put any number that is less than 7 degrees Celsius. 5 is less than 7, so we can put 5 degrees Celsius is less than 7 degrees Celsius. B. We can put any number that's less than negative 3 degrees Celsius. Negative 4 is to the left of negative 3 on the number line, so we know that negative 4 is less than negative 3. So we can put negative 4 degrees Celsius is less than negative 3 degrees Celsius. C. We need to find a temperature that's greater than negative 0.8 degrees Celsius and less than negative 0.1 degrees Celsius. That means that we need to find a number that's going to be to the right of negative 0.8 and to the left of negative 0.1 on the number line. I can put negative 0.5 because I know that negative 0.5 is to the left of negative 0.1 and to the right of negative 0.8 on a number line. D, this number is greater than negative two degrees Celsius. We need to find a number that's going to be to the right of negative two on a number line. Negative one is to the right of negative two on a number line, so we can go with negative one degrees Celsius is greater than negative two degrees Celsius. Problem number three, draw a diagram to represent each of these situations. Then write an addition expression that represents the final temperature. A, the temperature was 80 degrees Fahrenheit and then fell 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 80 minus 20. However, they're asking us to write an addition expression. So we have to write 80 plus negative 20, or 80 plus minus 20. I like to look at it like this. You have 80 and you take away 20. B, the temperature was negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit and then rose nine degrees Fahrenheit rose nine degrees Fahrenheit, that means it increased nine degrees Fahrenheit, so we can use a plus nine in this expression. Negative 13 plus nine. C, the temperature was negative five degrees Fahrenheit and then fell eight degrees Fahrenheit. The term fell means it went lower or it dropped. That means minus. We started with a negative five, and then we took away another eight. Since we need to write an addition expression, we can write negative five plus negative eight. Problem number four from seventh grade, unit two, lesson seven. 
Decide whether each table could represent a proportional relationship. If the relationship could be proportional, what would be the constant of proportionality? A. The number of wheels on a group of buses. 5 times 6 equals 30. 8 times 6 equals 48. 10 times 6 equals 60. 15 times 6 equals 90. This is proportional, and the constant of proportionality is 6. Since the number of wheels per bus is consistently 6, you can always multiply the 6 times the number of buses to find out the number of wheels in each group of buses. B. The number of wheels on a train. 20 times 9.2 equals 184. 30 times 8.8 .8 equals 264. 40 times 8.6 equals 344. And 50 times 8.48 equals 424. In this table, the number of wheels on a train is not proportional to the number of wheels on a train car. Because you are not consistently multiplying the number of train cars by the same number to figure out the number of wheels on the train. Problem number 5 from 7th grade Unit 4 Lesson 7. Noah was assigned to make 64 cookies for the bake sale. He made 125% of that number. 90% of the cookies he made were sold. How many of Noah's cookies were left after the bake sale? He was assigned to make 64 cookies, but he made 125% of 64. So we can write 64 times 125%. Written as a decimal, that's 64 times 1.25. And 64 times 1.25 is 80. So 80 is 125% of 64. 90% of those cookies sold. So we can write this as 80 times 90%. And as a decimal, this is written as 80 times 0 0.9 or 80 times 0 0.90. And that equals 72. That means they sold 72 cookies out of the 80 cookies that he baked. 80 minus 72 equals 8. That's the number of cookies that were left over after the bake sale. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.